All right, so welcome guys. Uh, we're gonna start with our first exercise. We're going to be compositing other people's pixels into what we call a cartoon jumble. And we're gonna start in photo bucket just to see some inspiration from past, past participants. So this is how you use photo bucket. Click on the library. Because even though it can be glitchy sometimes, and you're never sure what you're gonna see here, <laughs> you can always navigate through the sidebar and the albums. So you have these drop down arrows. So if you click on an album, look at the drop downs. We're going to look at our first exercise. So you click on that drop down. We're going to look at the cartoon jumble exercise. So click on exercise one. And then the subfolder there are past student examples. When we finish our work and we upload it to turn it in, it will be in this folder. But right now this folder is empty. So when we look at past student examples, we can view these a few ways. There's two pages. We can see them as thumbnails, or we can click on one and look at them a little bit larger. And then if we want to see them as full resolution, because all of our projects, starting with this exercise, we want to make intending to print so that they are portfolio quality. You can use the magnifying glass, and it will show you the image at full resolution, which should be larger than your screen. So what we are doing with this project, if you can't guess, is making an original composition out of cartoon characters and mostly just line art. The ideal project in my mind is one where you can't actually identify an individual character. But what's kind of cool is if you use a coherent set of characters or a coherent set of lines, such as this uses Winnie the Pooh, you can start to see and recognize the line work, kind of the style of it. This project I used to call the Arturo Herrera project, and you can do this if you like. He's an artist from Chicago. He does collage work and digital work. He has some great Art21 uh, videos you can check out. But if we look at his images, there's the man himself. Some of my favorite work he does uses Disney. And some of the most basic work just used coloring books and collaged them in creative ways. Now what's impressive to me about Arturo Herrera is to my knowledge, at least publicly, he has not been sued by Disney. Right? And that's because he is a master at transforming his references into his own aesthetic. That might be different if he started mass marketing t-shirts up there. I don't know. But mostly he's shown in galleries and museums. So even an image just like this takes a, a drawing from a coloring book of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and then adds this kind of abstract expressionist drip. And notice that he always covers the eyes and the face And then sometimes they'll get quite complicated. And he really likes early Disney because it has such a clear line quality. So this is a mural at the Tate Gallery in London. And it feels Disney-esque, but there is no character you can point to. Right? So he's definitely using the lines and making them his own compositions. So that's the inspiration for this. Sometimes they're colorful, sometimes they're textured, sometimes they're really straightforward. So he's my professional analog for this assignment. So it doesn't matter if you're a collage artist physically or digitally, these are the goals. Now the, the past examples I think are less successful are ones that treat the cartoon jumble as having gravity, as having a top and a bottom. So here, these become a little bit more linked to their original source material because top is top, bottom is bottom, feet are feet, arms are arms, right? So I would encourage you, same thing here, encourage you to try to have a free-floating design that is, can work upside down, work turned any which way. So almost like an explosion. 
and that just gives you more freedom to, to play with it. And you can choose line art of any type you like, but what we're going to be doing to the line art is transforming its scale, rotating it, erasing from it, and layering it up. So lots of examples. Now on your uh, ID cards, you chose a cartoon character that you would dress up as, right? That might be inspiration for where you find line art. What I chose was Kelvin from Kelvin and Hobbes, and someone says, I've never heard of Kelvin and Hobbes. So I'm going to use Kelvin and Hobbes to, uh, to fix that. So this is a comic by Bill Watterson, ran in the newspapers. And it's interesting, he actually stopped doing it because he was unhappy with the digital coloring of his original watercolors in the Sunday print editions. And so he is all famous for always coloring his own work, but he did not use a computer, right? So this is all pencil, ink pen, and watercolor. But when they were produced in, um, in the newspapers, his watercolors would get replaced with digital color because it prints more evenly. You can run the print presses a lot faster if you're not doing unique watercolor. But this is Calvin and Hobbes. And so the first thing we have to do is called image mining. We have to find references. So I'm going to create a new folder on the desktop. I do that by right clicking and saying new folder. Then I can click on the folder and hit return to be able to title it. I'm going to call this exercise one reference. It's up to you to organize your, your references and your assignments as you like, but I'll, I'll suggest. Now, in a Google image search, so I'm in Google Images, I'm going to change my tool settings and make it so the size of these can only be 4 megapixels or larger. Because I want them to be high enough quality to print. And four megapixels or larger allows me to do an 8 by 10 print at a good enough resolution. Okay, so I have Kelvin and Hobbes here, but I still have too many options. So I can also use these other tools. I don't want color. I want line art. So for color, I'm just going to say black and white. Right? And then for type, I can actually say line drawing. And now... With those tool settings, every image I see should be big enough, should be black and white, and should be a line drawing. Even though some, not all of them are by Bill Watterson. In fact, Bill Watterson had his copyright infringed on a lot while I was growing up with this kind of image. And this was on stickers everywhere of like a little boy peeing on Ford or peeing on Levi's or peeing on whatever brand people didn't like. And he's kind of famous for not caring that much. I'm sure he cared, but he never sued or never um, sought damages publicly. But I'm going to find images I like, and this is how I want you to image mine. Obviously, there's a lot here, thousands and thousands of images. So once you find one you like, I want you to right-click on it, and this is important, and say Open Link in New Tab, the first option when you right-click on a thumbnail. And I'm going to look for kind of full bodies. This one's really cool. Open link and new tab. I'm not going to choose ones that are cropped at the bottom because then the, the collage material doesn't have as much, mature, much uh, versatility, right? But it's fine. Find whatever you like. If you're not finding enough options, like the cartoon character or the, the series is too um, obscure, then just widen your search parameters. So I've, I'm only using images of Kelvin so far, but I can also use a Hobbes, his tiger. Let's see, this one's pretty great, even though it's cropped. So open image and new tab. I also am looking for images that have a lot of that energy that kind of those old Disney drawings have. So not just really vertical up and down images. And I want you to find five of them. Five that you can use. You can always do more, but no fewer than five. Now, whenever you do a, an image search, you'll find stuff that's 
like tagged incorrectly. That's kind of random. And I like that. So if you find something you think is really cool, like this gangster Mickey, which is a copyright infringement on some, and you want to use it, you can. There's no limit to your creativity. And you'll find some weird things within this. But choosing all from one kind of type of line work is going to give it a consistency that I'm looking for. All right, so now I've opened up six different tabs. And now I can actually see if these are good, good enough quality to use. So this first one, it tells me the pixel resolution underneath it. But to really know if I can use it and if it's good enough quality, I have to right click on it and say open image in new tab. And then I get to zoom in and see that it's not blurry, that the pixel quality is good. And I even like the graininess of the ink on paper. So then I can just drag and drop it into my reference folder. Or I could right click and say save image as and, and, and navigate it to my reference folder. Okay, the next one, I have to check it, right? I do that by right clicking, open image in new tab. It also depends on what the file format is, but this one's great. So that works. Drop it in. Next one. So it feels like a lot of steps, but they are important. You want good quality reference. Very nice. I'll get rid of all that text. So for this exercise, you are allowed to use other people's pixels, but you are not allowed to create your own. You can only take away and modify, right? Just like collage. Now this one, this is what Google opened up. Notice it was coded wrong. So this doesn't give me a full resolution image. And if I try to use it, look at the quality of it. It's going to be a lot blurrier. So I have to not use that. And that's why we open it in a new tab and we always check it. And we zoom in and we look. Sometimes a photo looks fantastic as a thumbnail and it will say it's huge. And it might even be huge, but when you zoom in on it, it's terrible. Now, professional cartoonists like Bill Watterson, that's less likely to happen. And this one's still fine quality. It's not as good as the others. You can see that the scan isn't quite as sharp, but I can still make use of it. So <clears throat> once you have five references, you're good to go. Now, what if you wanted only public domain references? You could make that as part of your search parameters under Google Images. You can say tools and you can say usage rights and you can say label labeled for reuse and these would be the ones that allow you to do whatever you want with them but I didn't expect to find any and there are some here and that's because they're on Creative Commons sites, but they're on there illegally <laughs> because this is not uh, Bill Watterson's Flickr page. And so this is just someone that scanned it in and wanted to share it, but, but put their um, Creative Commons copyright on it, which allows you to share and redistribute it and adapt it, remix it. But the problem is they didn't own it to begin with. So you always have to be diligent in resourcing the usage rights. So instead of doing just a Google search under usage rights, what I like to do is use a new image search. And one I like is called Pixabay. And these are all uh, images that are offered up by creators. And I'm one of the contributors, and you can be too. And so if I look for Kelvin and Hobbes here, I probably won't find anything. Right, but I'll find things that are similar to hobbits. <laughs> but if I widen it to kind of cartoon boys, I can limit it by color. It's not as good as Google. But all of these I can use and they'll all be large enough and they are open Creative Commons usage. Now this isn't such a big deal. Arturo Herrera uses Disney and is professional and is fine. That's because he transforms it 
completely.